All right, welcome to the Schematic Rush Reborn 2.0 tutorial. This plugin made by Chojo, I hope that I am saying that name right, but regardless, this is something that I have loved since the first time that I've used it. The UI, the overall use of it, just Schematic Brush in general has always been useful, but this UI has made it even more useful and even more efficient than it ever has been before. So I really hope you guys enjoy this. And before we get started, I just need to make a few little comments about what this tutorial will be about. So to start, I am not going to be going over the add-on, which is Grid Selector, and I won't be going over within the plugin itself, and that includes the directories, which is just essentially folders that you can use within uh, schematics and stuff, and the rejects, which is a whole can of worms that we won't get into just yet, weight, which is also really complicated, and we won't get into that quite just yet, and filters, which is also it adds a, a whole nother complexity to the, the brush that we don't need to get into quite yet, but we will get into all four of those things in a later tutorial that I will dub the advanced tutorial because some of these things are just really complicated and you'll understand why once we get into it. And with that, let's get into it. Let's get to the actual tutorial and let's get started. Here we go. All right, and before we can get into the actual schematic brush itself, we of course have to create the actual schematics. And in order to do that, for our sake, we wanna to try to keep the schematics as tight as possible to the edges. So as tight of a cube as you can make around the object you wanna make. So we're gonna go ahead and make sure our tops and our corners are all selected good. And we'll get into why that's important later on. So post two. And copying it will also be important. So where you copy it will also be important later on. And we'll get into that when we get into some of the parameters for the schematic brush in just a sec. So first, we need to also name this schematic. So we do skim save. And for this, it's important that we name this something with an underscore and a number. So this underscore number is important because if we want to be able to randomly rotate through the different schematics that we're creating with the same name, we can do that if we go ahead and give it an underscore and a number. And we'll show that in just a sec again once we get right into the schematic brush. But first, let's go ahead and save these other two trees and we'll fast forward through that real quick. All right, and now that we actually have all three of those, we can get into the actual tutorial. So in order to actually get the schematics on a brush, we need to get ourselves a tool. And basically any of the swords and basically any of these tools will work except for the wooden pickaxe. The wooden pickaxe is world edit, so don't use that. But basically anything else in here, any of these other tools and any of the swords will work just fine. So. We are gonna go ahead and grab a random tool and do slash SBR to open our schematic brush menu. So for this, to start off, we're gonna be adding our schematic sets. So a schematic set is basically the schematic or schematics that you're adding to the brush. So we're gonna go ahead and hit change. We're gonna hit and hit this change button to get into the secondary menu. And then we're gonna hit add. And in order to actually add the schematics that we just named, we're going to go ahead and hit the name and type in tut. And I have a few different ones, but we just made tut. And in order to get all three of them randomly rotating, we're basically just going to do underscore star. And that gets rid of the number. And it basically says, I want to rotate through all three or all of the schematics that I made with an underscore and that name. So this name, underscore it doesn't matter how many numbers i actually had if i had a thousand different schematics it would randomly rotate through all thousand of those schematics if i put that star there so let's go ahead and enter that and as you can see if we hover over it it's going to show that we're pasting any of those three schematics 
And now, if we go ahead, we can see that there are a bunch of modifiers we can add, and that's flip, rotation, and offset. So something, before we even click on any of these, which you can click on to add them in, before we do that, I want you to note that these in this are only going to be influencing this schematic. So that's important for later on. But for now, just note that these ones that we add in here will only influence these schematics or schematic. So if we add in a flip with rotation, so for flip and rotation, we get a fixed list and random. So specifically for flip, if we add in a list, we can actually add in every single one of the flips, including up, which means that you can flip the schematic completely upside down. And for our sake, for the trees, we don't really want to add that. But if we want all of the other ones, we can simply hit random. So we're going to go ahead and leave flip at random. And then for rotation, unfortunately, with rotation, we can't add in the fun rotations. So normally with world edit, you can do slash rotate and then zero and then another parameter and then another parameter. And all of those will rotate that schematic on the different axes. So we have Y, X, and Z just for reference. So the first one you do will be Y. The second one you do will be X. And the third one you do will be rotating on the Z axis. Unfortunately, with this, we don't need to worry about that. We are only going to be worried about the regular Y axis rotations. And it's the same with fixed and random. With list, you can have basically just three or just two of the different parameters. So let's say we just want 180 and 270. But for now, with the tree, we want to keep it random. So again, keep in mind that these ones are only influencing these three schematics that we put on here right now. And for now, we're going to leave offset for the global thing. So if we hit back, we're in the secondary menu. And let's say we want to save all of the presets that we just did for this. So all we have to do is say save preset, and we can call these tutorial trees save preset. So now everything that we just did in here, so adding the all three of these random schematics, the random rotation and the random flip will all be saved in that preset. So if we go back and we accidentally hit this little clear button here, so it just changed that to zero. Oh no, it's gone. Good news is we can just go to this little add preset button when we're in here. We can click on the name we just gave, tutorial trees. And bam, everything's back. If we hit the edit button, we can see it still has our random rotation, still has our random flip, and it still has all of the schematics that we added in there. So we can hit back. And now, if we want, we can add in another name for schematics. So let's say we just want to add in the tutorial tree zero. And for this one, we want this one to always flip and rotate in the exact same way. So we want to fix rotation or, or uh, sorry, a fixed flip. Let's do this one up just so you guys can see that it's flipping it upside down. And we can see what it's doing to this schematic. So this one will be always flipped upside down. And then rotation, we want probably, let's do a list for this one. Let's do zero, oops, sorry, list zero, and let's do also 180. So it'll only rotate on those two different axes. And if we go ahead and do back, now we have both of these, and we can also save a preset for these. So if we want both of these to appear at once, we can make a new saved preset for this called, let's say, tutorial trees underscore one. So that we know that this one is going to put both of our different presets that we just put in there. So if we hit back and we hit clear on accident, we go to change the presets go to add preset and now we can see we have our underscore one if we click on that we hit enter bam everything's back just as we put it now if we hit back we're in the main menu so now this is what I like to call the global menu because everything in terms of modifiers that you put in here will influence both of the schematic sets or all of the schematic sets that you added 
So for instance, let me go actually in here and let's edit one of these. So let's edit the three different schematics and we're gonna add an offset to this because I think offset is the easiest way to sort of show the addition and subtraction of the global versus individual uh, modifiers. We are gonna have a fixed offset of negative three. So this will always paste three blocks into the ground for all three of these random schematics that it might paste. And then if we go back, and we can see we put that in there. If we hover over it, we see the offset negative three. Okay, go back. And now if we were to add an offset for this, and we go ahead and hit range from, let's say negative three to negative one, and we enter that in there. So this will actually add to the offset that we put on those three tutor tu tutorial tree underscore star schematics. So basically we did a negative three set offset for that tutorial tree. And then this will add negative three to negative one on top of that offset. So basically anything we put in here, including the rotation and the flip will be added to these individual modifiers that we added here. So just keep that in mind. These are the global modifiers for these, both of these, for all of the sets. And then if we were to go in here and edit an individual set, obviously it individually modifies these or this schematic. Okay, I hope that's clear enough. If it's not, do feel free to leave me questions below. But for now, I'm going to I'm actually going to remove the uh, rotation and offset for, for now because we have them in these offsets and I don't want them to influence these in any way, but I will leave this, uh, this offset here of negative three to one, uh, just cause I want to show it real quick, the difference. So include air is exactly what it sounds like. Do you want to include the air that you copied in your schematic? And for trees, we probably don't want the air to paste in there. And then replace all is if we want the schematic to paste normally or if we want the schematic to paste as if we were doing basically a G-mask zero. So normally when you copy something like I'm doing now, and let's actually copy it from a couple blocks above the ground. So let's, let's copy it right here. And then if we paste it and we are standing on the ground, normally we just do a normal paste minus A. As you can see, it will replace the blocks below me with those wood blocks that were originally there. So that's essentially replace all equals true, what I'm doing right now. And then if I were to do G mask zero and then do the same paste, as you can see, none of the blocks below got pasted in. So that is essentially like doing replace all false like it's on now. And let me go ahead, let's hold the, let's go back up here and let's hold, make sure you're holding the actual tool that you want to bind the thing to and I'm going to scroll back up and I hit the bind button and as you can see it's bound for schematics in two sets to this one tool right here. Also really quickly it's worth mentioning that you do need to be holding the brush when doing slash SBR to bring up the previous menu that you had because if you're not holding the brush and you do slash SBR it will just bring up a blank menu so just make sure you're using and holding the tool that you want to use the entire time and you should be good. So I'm gonna undo those two trees right there real quick. And now we're gonna go ahead and show some of the cool features of Schematic Brush that make Schematic Brush really just that much better. So the first thing I wanna show is how you can show what you're actually about to paste. So if we type slash SBRS and we can see the first one is preview and we hit enable and then true, we can see all of a sudden we can see what we're about to paste. And as you can see, when we did SBRS, there's also another thing here called show names. And if we make that true, when we actually click to paste the thing, as you can see, it gives us a whole bunch of data about what we actually just pasted. We can also make it appear in different spots. So right now we are on action bar, which basically means it'll put the info above the action bar and it'll fade away 
pretty quickly. So when we paste, you can see the info and then it just kind of fades away after a sec there. And then if we want to keep that info, we can also put it in our chat. And for now, we're not going to worry about subtitle and title because those don't really work very well, at least in my testing. So uh, if it does work for you, you're welcome to test them out. But for now, the important one is chat. If so, if we go ahead and enter that and we click for this, you can see it enters in the actual tree that it's supposed to. So as you can see, uh, we also have our upside down tree working fine. Um, but I am actually going to remove that because we don't really need that to be in here. But I just wanted to show that is what the up flip looks like if you were to use it. So when you're actually pasting the schematic, this is where these all become really important. So the bottom is going to be the lower bound block, which will include the air that you selected. So let's say that we had selected this tree with a bunch of air below and a bunch of air above. So if we were to have selected this with a whole bunch of air above and below, if we had bottom selected, it would actually include the lowest air block. And then the opposite applies for top. It would include the highest air block. So essentially it includes air if you do top and bottom in your selection. So that's why we want to make our selections really neat and precise when we're actually selecting it. So that way, even if we do do top and bottom, it doesn't really make much of a difference in our actual pasting of the schematics. And then with drop, that is essentially the same thing as bottom, except it doesn't include air. So it's going to paste from the lowest non-air block. For And for this schematic, that we made, it would essentially be these blocks right here that it will paste from. And then the opposite applies to rays, so it would be these top blocks that it would paste from. And then original and middle, so original is going to be where you copied that thing from, so if you copy it from here, that's where it's going to paste it from and calculate the offset and everything else off of. And then, of course, the last but not least, the middle is going to be the middle most block of the schematic, and that does include air as well. And that is, again, why you, it is basically ideal to make your selections of your schematics as tight as possible without any huge air chunks on any axis. So now that we have our tool actually bound to our axe here, we can do the SBRS preview, enable true one more time. So we can see our tree. Nope. So a good opportunity now because I just did SBRS preview true and it didn't show the preview. A good opportunity to show that you can also do slash SBRA and it gives you a whole bunch of different things that we can do here. But really all we want to do is go ahead and reload things. And then we can do a slash SBR. We can bind it again and all of a sudden our preview is back. So if you're ever running into problems, debug is always an option with this tool as well. So figured I'd show that really quickly before we get into the really fun stuff, the shortcuts. And this is probably my favorite feature of this tool besides being able to see where you're about to paste the schematic in the first place. So if we do slash SBR really quickly, we can see in our sets, we have a whole lot of different offsets and such. But what really matters is this offset right here. So if I make this offset a fixed one, fixed negative three. So if we make it a fixed one of negative three, and I go ahead and I try to hit shift and F, which is supposed to be the thing that will change the offset of the schematic. As you can see, it's giving me a red thing saying, this is not shiftable. And that's because it has to either be a list or a range. And essentially, in order for you to shift the offset, there basically has to be multiple offsets for it to shift too. So let's go back to our original one. So negative three to negative one. And let's enter that in. As you can see, it just changed the thing in front of us. And let's make sure we hit bind. And now if we hit shift 
And I'm also hitting the space bar so I don't actually fly down, just so you know. But you don't actually have to be able to hit the space bar. So if we're on the ground and we hit shift, it will also work. So let's go ahead and show that. So if I'm just hitting shift and on the ground, as you can see, I'm hitting F. So holding shift and hitting F, you can see it's changing the offset every time I hit F. And then I'm going to go ahead and fly back up. Uh, if we go ahead and make this even more, so let's go ahead and do SBR again. Just so we bring up the menu fresh. And let's go with a bit bigger of a range. So let's do negative 5 to negative uh, 7. Or, sorry, let's do positive 2. Okay, so that's going to give us about 5, 6, 7, 8 blocks of rotation if you include the 0. And we'll go ahead and bind that. So now you can see it's really far into the ground. And if we go ahead and hit Shift and F, it's going to slowly be able to bring it way back up. And we can kind of go down and see how far we're going into the ground. And one more thing that I forgot to do that I actually want to make sure is part of these schematics is replacing all the blocks. So we gotta make we want to make sure that this is actually true so that the roots of our trees, so let's rebind that, and then we'll go back up. And now we can see when we paste it, hopefully, yeah, you can see that it's going to essentially replace the grass with our actual wood. So it looks like the roots are actually in the ground. So now that we actually have all of that set up. The last couple of things that I want to show you, so this is changing the offset, as you can see, and then if we let go of shift and we just press F, that is actually going to skip the schematic. As you can see, it's popping up the skip schematic thing, and if we hit paste, it will show us which schematic we're going to paste, and we can just keep sk skipping through the different schematics that we have here. So the other two parameters also require you to have either a list or a random flip or rotation. So we can basically go between the different flips and rotations that we set as long as we have a list or a random within those. And that also applies to the global ones as well. So as long as these global flips and rotations are either listed or random, those can also be applied to the shortcuts we're about to show. So for rotating, all you gotta do is left click. And as you can see, that'll rotate around all four of the different ones. And if we had a list and we only had two different ones, that would obviously only do two different rotations. And then if we wanna go ahead and do the flip, all we gotta do is hit shift and then left click. So again, I'm holding space bar so I don't fly down, but I hit, I'm hitting shift. And if you're on the ground, you don't have to hold spacebar, so you can still change the flip without holding the spacebar. And then, yeah, all I'm doing is left clicking. So shift, left click, flip. No shift, left click is the rotation. And then all you gotta remember is the same sort of thing with the F button. So the normally, if you're just holding something that isn't a schematic brush, if you hit F, it will change that to your offhand. Uh, that's all F is. So if we hit shift and F, that will change the offset. And then if we hit regular F, that will change the whole schematic that we're about to paste. So we're gonna hit shift F a bunch of times, get that up. And then as we can see, we just pasted that into the ground a little bit and that worked out very well. So yeah, this is a really efficient way to paste a lot of schematics really fast. And there are a lot of more things that you can do with this. Um, a lot of things that are really, really advanced that we will definitely be getting to in some of the more advanced tutorials coming in the future, including the grid selector, which isn't actually that complicated. It's just a really efficient and nice way to create the schematics really quickly for the schematic brush. So essentially creating all these schematics would have just been a couple of clicks away if I had used the schematic brush uh, grid selector. Um, but yeah, that is something that is sort of paired with the schematic brush, and I'm looking forward to making a tutorial for that as well. And uh, definitely looking forward to making a tutorial for some of the more complicated stuff. That might take quite a bit of time for some of the really complicated stuff. I don't know how many different videos in total they will be. But yeah, um, for now, thank you all for watching. I hope this tutorial was enough information for you all, and I hope it 
helps you to use this tool to its full efficiency. And if you are confused about anything, please do leave comments down below. I will do my best to reply to them and help you guys out however I can. And of course, I will also leave a schematic and world download for just this chunk right here that I made. If you guys want to use these trees, they're free to use. I don't have any attachment to them. So yeah, with that, thank you all for watching. I am sure you know how the buttons work down there by now, so do click them as you please. And yeah, look forward to the next tutorials. Pluto out.